Hey everyone, welcome back to FTB Infinity Evolved. <laughs> Guys, I uh, managed to get this uh, little mining contraption up and running. Well, I guess people call these things frame quarries. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry guys, last episode I'm just, I got really, really tired and I was just not thinking right. I was like, you know what, it's probably just time for bed. So I just decided to go ahead and close it off, finish it up, and show you guys the end product the next episode. Now, we got a little bit of an issue. Well, and that would be here. So, currently we have, right now our base is not chunk loaded, so our chest is all nice and full. You guys will notice I picked up my world anchor and such. Uh, because there's actually a, a little bit of an issue here, and it's uh, kind of through, from what I understood, um... I don't know if it's like a server problem or single player problem, uh, but T Fox told me that this is also kind of crashing the server in a sense. Something to do with um, the funky locomotion um, frames here moving and such. So, uh, just to give you guys a quick rundown, if you guys want to attempt this yourselves, uh, the frame slider here is pushing the frame that way, and then we got the frame pusher pushing the frame slider forward, and what happens is when the frame pusher pushes the slider forward, it immediately hits this block of redstone here, which triggers it to move the frame forward. And yeah, so that's basically how it runs, and they both constantly get power that they need from the redstone energy flux ducts there. We got our solar panel here keeping this all nice and working, but the other issue is it's not always daytime apparently in here, so these things don't usually work. Now I was thinking, and I tried this out and it did seem to work, could set up like a, um, uh, a solar light sensor back here, and it would keep this off until the sun would come up or whatever, however it works, and uh, would provide and turn off the signal, allowing this to actually run. So as long as nothing was in here and, uh, you know, light or whatever, you, you know what I get. You, you know what I mean, the light sensor and stuff. So, seriously? Oh, we must be getting power in. Because <laughs> it's working again. Yeah, you can see it skipped a beat down there. Had a few issues with that. So, um, I did go ahead and set up a world anchor, or not world anchor, uh, ender pouch, <laughs> my brain. My brain not working this morning. I haven't drank all my coffee. Captain Bentley has not drank all of his coffee. So here's the plan, guys. I'm going to pick this up. I'm going to probably have to say to hold off on this for the time being. And we're going to have to work towards a different means of uh, resource um, gathering. Because this is just probably not going to work. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and gather up this stuff on the ground here. And I'm going to make my way back to my base, my airship, and I'm actually, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up too. So I'm going to clean this up real quick. We'll be back in just a minute, back at the airship, and we'll get started on a secondary means of gathering some resources. So we'll be back in just a minute. And back on the SS Bentley, looks like we have ourselves a uh, interesting guest. I like your hairstyle, man. <laughs> we should be like Afro brothers, man. Our, our hairs, they match. It's cool. Afros are in style again. <laughs> Endermen with Afros. What is this world coming to? I don't know. Airships and stuff, that's what. So anyways, guys, we're back. And I've done a little bit of uh, reorganization since last episode. I've uh, made some of these diamond chests here with some of these... Uh, gold to diamond chest upgrades. Pretty easy to make. We've been making all the other upgrades and such before. Uh, just requires diamond gold plates and, you know, glass of that stuff. 80,000 RF, no big deal, right? That's nothing. So, went ahead and made some of these. A lot more room in here now. And I've went ahead and reorganized some of them uh, via, like, mod-based uh, modules. Um, so, back here we have... Like immersive engineering, immersive engine uh, integration and stuff like that inside of this chest. You guys can kind of get an idea of it just by looking in there. This is all like thermal foundation, expansion, and there's uh, this one, arsenal. Um, that's not it. That one, arsenal. Uh, so all of the thermal mods in there, Ender IO. This is all Tinker's Construct. Uh, we got some applied energetics, funky locomotion. We got railcraft. 
This is going to be like Jabba. All the storage mods I'm going to place inside of there currently. This is kind of random. And then these are the two chests that we had before, which is uh, industrial craft and logistics pipes. Basically all of our routing stuff. So thermal dynamics, build craft pipes, all that jazz. Um, I've also went ahead and constructed myself up a little bit of a smeltery right down here. So I don't have to keep going back and forth to the old base. And I got a white, white, white ender chest down here to send all this stuff back into our network so we don't have to run pipes because right now uh, I kind of have problems. It's um, Everything's along the edges, so it'd be like digging into the outside and it wouldn't look very cool. So, um, yeah, and yeah, I just haven't finished the bottom, so that's, that's why there's like nothing down here. I just got to finish this later. So that's the plan. And I also went ahead and made a hardened fluid duct to extract from the drain here with a reinforced servo to hopefully make uh, pouring out of this a little bit smoother than what we had before. I also made an ender pouch. So I, I think I might have already shown this off, but this thing is wonderful. We get an extraction module on our chest over there. We just place in an item we don't want and uh, it just places it in there and sends it away to where it actually needs to go. Like for instance, the torch sends it where it needs to go, which is in Tinker's Construct. I'll take that back, thank you. So what do we need to do, guys? Well, we need to start working on a different form of gathering resources since our uh, mining wells, our frame quarry is not going to cut it right now. Maybe eventually we can, but T Fox said it might take a little while for something like that to work, so we don't really have a little while. We need to get moving. And with that, let's start working towards an actual quarry. Now, I want to make this one here. Now, the reason why is because there's not much difference between these two. The regular quarry from Buildcraft and the Ender quarry from Extra Utilities, I say there's not much of a difference, but there is. When I say there's not much of a difference, I mean in their crafting recipes. They're a little bit different than normal. Uh, basically, the only difference is between this and the Ender quarry is these two pieces here, the diamond chipset and the diamantine electron tube. The Ender quarry requires emerald electron tubes and emerald chipsets. Now, there's also a little bit of a plus with the Ender quarry in the fact that it mines differently than the regular quarry. If you guys aren't familiar, I'm going to go ahead and explain it real quick. Basically, the Ender quarry mines in columns up and down um, and then moves um, through like... It does a column, moves over, does another column, moves over, does another column. Now, the quarry, the regular quarry from Buildcraft, all it does is it starts shaving away the uh, topmost layer until it gets all the way down to the bottom when it's done. So, it'll go in just, you know, horizontal, and then it goes back and forth and back and forth until it goes down to the next layer, and then it does that, and the next layer, and stuff like that, and so on and so on. Now, there's also another little plus to the Ender Quarry. It has add-ons, these little upgrades here, and some of them actually allow you to get Fortune 3, or even things like Silk Touch. Very nice. Not that bad. I can do that. Silk Touch is nice, so we can get more out of our diamonds. Unfortunately, the quarry doesn't have anything like that, at least not in here. So, we're going to be working towards the Ender Quarry. Now, most of this stuff we've already made, such as the MFSU. We've already got one back there on a nuclear reactor. We got some mining wells already pre-made, ready to go. Uh, Tesseract, which is going to require the frame. It's going to require Teleporter, which we're currently not using the ones we've already made, so that's nice and easy. Some Enderium, we've already made that. The Octodic Capacitor, the Ender Electron Tube, and so forth and so forth. Let's worry about this a little bit later on, because the problem is right here, the Laser Drill Precharger that we need. The problem here is this little guy here. We need the Pink Slime Crystal. What this is going to require us to do is actually spawn a Pink Slime to actually kill it and get some pink slime balls. Yeah. So that means we have to jump in to a little bit of mine factory. Oops, not factory. -ry. I don't know what I just spelled. <laughs> mine factory reloaded. So we need ourselves a machine called the slaughterhouse. This little doohickey is going to produce us pink slime, which we can actually scoop up into a bucket, place into the world, and we'll spawn a slime. Uh, after that, we'll take it from there and hopefully get it fixed, but first, in order to make plastic, <laughs> we need rocket fuel. And to make rocket fuel, we need vats. And we need vats, not from Fallout, but from Ender.io. So here we go. We're going to need some of these. We've got machine chassis and all of that stuff. 
let us get going. So I've already pre-made a machine frame for this instance here. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we need. We're gonna need bars, lumium. Do we have lumium? Please tell me. Yes, we have lumium. Lumium we have. Um, and then we need some iron bars. We'll need four of those guys and we need some capacitors, which I don't believe we, oh wait, we do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I need to get some more of those made up like ASAP. All right, and then we got that. That goes there, and our basic capacitors get us our machine chassis. Next up, we want to make some fluid tanks. Easy enough, glass and iron. I did do a little bit of mining since last episode because we were, like, extremely low on iron. I mean, like, we were almost out of iron. Technically, we pretty much were out of iron. So um, I did a little bit of mining. I went ahead and got that smelted up for us. And now we're doing a little bit better on it at least um, so that we can hopefully get something going and uh, get a, a, a quarry running in the sense that uh, we can actually get more coming in. So we're going to make up two of these fluid tanks that we need. We're also going to need ourselves a furnace, correct? Yes, we need a furnace. So let's get some cobblestone in. Let's go ahead and request 10. And then all we gotta do is hit this little button right here, and then just do 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 do. Oh, it's raining out and there's a mob. Okay. <laughs> it sounded like someone poured lava on my base. I was like, uh, not good. <laughs> All right, and then next up we'll need our cauldron, so we'll need seven of these. Uh, let's do this, and why is the cauldron? Oh, right, it's the plates thing again. All right, all right. At least I remembered it this time. At least I remembered. I didn't have to fully go in and go, hey, how does this work? So I'm going to get this up and running real quick. There shouldn't take but just another quick second here, guys. Let's see. This goes there. These go on the side. That goes in the bottom. That um, goes there as well. This goes here. And in the corners, it is electrical steel. So this is going to require some silicon, coal powder, and iron. We're going to need four of these. So let's get our, not kual. I don't even know what that is. I mean, is that an, even a thing? Could be. I don't know. All right, let's grab some iron, and then we need some silicone, which I've already made some of that up as well. I'm going to go ahead and toss this into our alloy furnace upstairs, guys. And why did you only send... Okay, I was going to say. I'm going to toss this upstairs. I'm going to also go ahead and do a little bit more pre-crafting real quick. Uh, we've already got this up and running. We need, after this, probably... Let's go ahead and take take a quick little peek. So this is going to get us our uh, rocket fuel for our plastic. We're going to probably need to go ahead and craft all this stuff here, all the Invar items. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. Um, I'm also going to need to make up a couple more of these machine frames. So I'm going to do that real fast as well. Um, I'm also going to want to be looking at making an auto spawner from Mine Factory Reloaded. So we'll need a few more items. I'm going to go ahead and get prepared for that here in just a second. And we'll be back when all is said and done. See you guys back in just a second. All right, guys. Hopefully everything I need is pre-crafted, ready to go. There might be a few small things we might need to do, but we'll get to that when we get to that. So, we made our vat, and, well, to kind of further ourselves along, we're actually going to need to make ourselves some plastic, which is what the vat is indeed for. We need rocket fuel, and to make rocket fuel, we need the vat. So, we're going to need to make hooch first, and I'm probably going to want to make about two buckets worth. Um, I'm, I don't really need two vats. I'm just going to try to make my way through with one currently and see how far we can actually get. Hopefully we can do this with no issues. We're going to poke a hole right here. We're going to place our vat down. It's going to start filling up and this actually looks a lot cooler than I remember. This actually used to be like a little kind of like circular little machine here, uh, but this looks a lot nicer. Wow, this holds a lot more power. Holy cow. All right, well, next thing we're going to need is a reliable source of water. Now, we have these reservoirs. I didn't quite think about it, but yeah, it might be a good idea to go ahead and make another one of those. 
So let's go ahead and see what we need. These things are fairly easy to make. We just need the cauldrons. So, oh, there we go. Perfect. Iron plates. We got all we need. I need 14 of you to come in and do your stuff. Let's get some of this fused quartz coming in as well. I think we need four of those and a little bit of glass, which I believe we already have as well. So you give us two of those and then fused quartz top and bottom you and then glass on the edges will give us our reservoirs now this hopefully should be all that we need to get this up and running uh, for now I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna poke this in the back wall here something like so and we'll grab ourselves a couple buckets come down to our existing reservoir get a few of these out Fill this one up, one and two, there we go. And we'll just go ahead and set it up to output. It'll start automatically outputting into the adjacent inventory. So now we need to make hooch. <laughs> hooch, we have to make hooch guys. Seriously, we have to make hooch. So we're gonna need some sugar. Well then, that's just wonderful. All right, so you can see there's a whole heap of different things here that we can actually use to make hooch now one of the best things that we currently have besides poisonous potatoes wheat and all of that stuff that we have an abundance of is indeed apples so I am gonna use apples and we need a little bit of sugar so that means we are going to need either some sugar cane which I don't have a lot of uh, I really need to get a sugar cane farm up and running but let's go ahead and request 30 of these I don't quite know how much sugar we're gonna need for just like a couple buckets worth of hooch in fact I don't even know how much hooch we need for a couple buckets of rocket fuel but we're gonna go ahead and uh, try this out real quick let's start off with 16 Ooh, look at that go cooking it up cooking up that hooch <laughs> wait is this supposed to be farting like that I don't I don't know if it's supposed to be farting like that I'm just gonna go ahead and say it's safe to assume it's supposed to be doing that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and let that do its thing and hopefully get us a couple buckets worth of this stuff. It looks like it's actually almost done with its first cycle. There we go. Uh, yeah, not quite a full bucket there, which is okay, and it only used one, so I think we might have enough sugar cane to go ahead and get us going. I've also went ahead and got some sawdust going by tossing a uh, stack of logs inside of our uh, pulverizer here. Also been making some blaze powder in our fluid transposer with a little bit of destabilized redstone, some glowstone, as some of you guys have mentioned. Um, also needed some more steel, which is also refined iron, which we can get in our induction smelter with two pulverized coal and some iron. So we'll go and send that away and do its stuff. All right, so we need some compressed sawdust. How did we do that? I totally forgot. So we need this. Oh, it's just like that. So basically it's easier than what I had thought. All right, so I think we need like four of these, I wanna say. All right, let's head back here, let's check out our slaughterhouse. Yeah, we're gonna need four, so we're actually gonna need eight of these compressed ones. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, we're good there. That's all good to go, ready to go, happy to go, and we just need some raw plastic, which easily enough is obtained by some sticky resin, which is one of the ways we can actually do it. We can actually go get mine factory reloaded rubber trees, um, but I'm pretty sure we can go ahead and go about this method as well, which is gonna make us a whole bunch of rubber. And we're gonna take this rubber once it's completed in our induction furnace, and well, we're just gonna toss it in there right again. That should hopefully get us some raw plastic that we need. I still love this induction furnace. It still does an amazing job. It does what it needs to do, and that's all that matters. So almost done, there we go. We'll toss this back up in here and that should cook up into raw plastic. Perfect. All right, and we'll just grab just a little bit. We don't need all of it at the moment. I'll let it finish and do its stuff. Let's see how our hooch is doing. It's not doing too bad. Can I actually extract this with, oh, look at that, we can. We can extract our hooch. All right, so hooch combined in our vat to get us rocket fuel. So how do we get rocket fuel? Well, looks like there's only one good way of going about getting rocket fuel. It's redstone and gunpowder. So thankfully we do have a nice little mob farm up and running that's been doing pretty decent getting us gunpowder. So let's go ahead and grab a stack of this and a stack of redstone. 
unfortunately, we are getting a little bit low on redstone as well, and that's where this whole ordeal is hopefully going to get us. Um, I would really like us to be able to get <laughs> some more resources in. It's getting ridiculous. All right, so I do, do I not have, like, a provider module on this thing or something? Provider. Leave one item per stack. I think I might have accidentally hit something wrong. I don't know why this is not working. Because tank should be showing up up there. Anyways, let's grab this. We're going to start funneling out our hooch into our little guy here. I don't know if it'll automatically... I think we can set it to extract automatically if we go ahead and set output here. Yeah, check that out. Automatically pushing all of it into our tank. I'm going to let this finish up, guys. I'm going to let it do its thing. We're going to get a little bit more of this hooch going. Then I'm going to replace that out. We'll place the hooch inside of the vat with the redstone and gunpowder so that way we can start producing our rocket fuel. I'm going to go ahead and let that run, do its thing, and we'll be back once I get a couple more buckets of rocket fuel up and running. I'll see you guys back here in just a minute. So, I'm just a little curious. If we make rocket fuel, does that mean we're considered rocket scientists? <laughs> I mean, I did make an airship, right? I I could be a airship scientist? No, it's not the same as a rocket scientist. I don't know. Wait a minute. Who even said rocket scientists are better than airship scientists? <laughs> that doesn't matter. We got ourselves our two buckets of rocket fuel ready to go. Let's toss that in here. We can finally get ourselves some plastic sheets. There we go. We are ready, guys. I'm going to make up real quick our machines that we need. We need, for one, our this, that, and there's a thingy my bob that goes on the bottom. Okay, these things need to be swapped, I believe. This is going to be our slaughterhouse. There we have it. Our very first mine factory reloaded machine. And next off, I want to make a spawner, an auto spawner here. So now we're also going to need some emeralds. There's a little bit of an issue here than the fact that I don't really have a lot. I've also been mining like crazy in... Extreme Hills biomes, I've been looking in the nether, and I totally overlooked the main thing that can also want emeralds. That is... Villagers. <laughs> These guys here love emeralds. And I just kind of did a little bit of looking around. I made some of these golden lassos here, which... Uh... Okay, they were easy to make, I promise. Let's do this. There we go. A little bit of gold, some string, and an eye of ender will yield you a golden lasso from extra utilities. These are very nice. Now, I did pick up a few villagers. Uh, some of them want wheat as such. Uh, this guy's not too bad. I'm going to go ahead and put him aside. I can't remember quite what all of them wanted. This guy wanted fish, which isn't bad either, but I don't have a lot of fish at the moment. I figured I could set something up with that later. Also, wool. So wool's not bad either. Let's do this and get some emeralds. So we should have some wheat laying about from previous uh, endeavors earlier on. And we'll grab ourselves some emeralds. There we go. Not too many. But thankfully, um, I think that'll be enough for what we... Hey, get back here! Where are you going off to? And what is your next trade? Horrible. Get back in your lasso. <laughs> Jeez, man. Want to trade all that for nothing. Anyway. We'll put our wheat away. That doesn't want to be put away. Okay. Fine. Didn't want to do it anyway. All right. Next off, we're going to need ourselves some magma cream. Don't know why that doesn't work all the time. All right. So we're going to make ourselves the auto spawner. I did have to go to the nether, get some nether wart. Besides that, we should have everything else that we need. Emeralds. Magma cream. Nether wart. Machine frame. This do a banger on the bottom. And these on the top will achieve us the auto spawner. This is going to take a hefty amount of power to actually run. As well as the slaughterhouse for that matter. So we are going to need to get ourselves a decent little power supply. I'm not going to get a huge one. I'm probably just going to grab a HV capacitor if I have one in here maybe. 
No, I don't actually. Okay, that's a little unfortunate, but that's okay, it's okay. We're just gonna steal this one away for the time being. Uh, currently, we're not needing that power over there anyway, so we're just gonna take it. And let's jump down this way. Let's see, I need some flux ducts. Hand me 10 of them. Now, if you guys remember earlier on, we actually set up a small cow farm. And that's actually set up back in our old base, kind of hidden away underground a bit. And we're actually going to go fly back over there real quick. Fortunately enough, it is raining out. Such a horrible day for an airship. I need to get some more um stuff built on our airship, especially on the deck. I think it's going to be awesome. So, let's head down. Take a look at our cows, see how, th oh, hello cows. <laughs> how you guys doing? Hopefully you're doing fine. What is stopped up on this thing anyway? I thought I set this up to, to work just fine. What, what, why are we stopped up? There shouldn't be nothing stopping this up. I, I don't understand. Did this turn off somehow? I'm wondering if some settings might have got flip-flopped around. Oh, I know what it is. The, um, the cutter on the thing is actually broken. I have to repair it later. Roger that. All right, so we got a whole bunch of cows. <laughs> oh, man. This is literally going to be what I would like to call a slaughter. Um, I don't mean to be mean, but this is going to have to be necessary. It's, it's, it's necessary for what I call science. And unfortunately, it has to happen. So, with that being said, let's grab our HV capacitor, place it down there, and we'll just hook it up like so. And we have ourselves coming in some pink slime. Oh, yeah. Now, we only need a thousand millibuckets of pink slime to actually achieve our one bucket of slime that we're going to need. So, I did make sure to get some more cows in here, and I do have some. Hiding away for later if absolutely need be. But currently, you won't get slime apparently every time a cow dies. <laughs> These guys are trying their hardest to stay out of the kill zone. I'm sorry, fellas, but it you kind of got to come over here eventually. All right, besides that, we are also going to probably want to get ourselves a tank. So that way this thing can auto um, extract into a tank where we can actually pick it up. I don't know if we can actually just pull it straight out with a bucket. In fact, I don't even have a bucket. I thought I had, no, I left it in the, the machiney bob. Yeah, so we're almost there. I want to say we do have enough cows in here to go ahead and get ourselves a full bucket of this pink slime, which is pretty nice. Looks like our capacitor is doing a pretty decent job as well. Come on, come on. Yes, come on, keep going. Die, cows, die. I don't know where Mr. Cool Cow went, but... Uh, He's been gone for some time. I don't know what actually happened to him. I didn't do anything, I promise. Wouldn't do nothing, Mr. Cool Cow. Not intentionally, I promise. I promise. Did I say I promise enough? I don't think I did. All right, so this is basically almost done. I think what I'm going to need to do real quick, though, is head back over. I'm going to grab a bucket. If that doesn't work, I'm also going to grab a tank as well. And then we'll be back in just a minute to set up the auto spawner, which is stage two of Project Ender Quarry. We'll be back in just a second. Alright guys, there we have it. We have over a bucket of pink slime. Now let's go ahead and test this with just a bucket. Alright, that gives us meat. I don't I don't I don't really want meat. Okay. Um I don't I don't want meat. <laughs> Good thing I did grab a uh, a tank as well, so we're gonna go ahead and just um I guess we'll just pick this up and place this. I think it auto extracts. I think it does. Yes, it does. Awesome. So we can grab ourselves out of here now. Pink slime buckets. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and kill this. I want the rest of my cows to live. Mr. Okay, now you're just Mr. Fancy Cow. You're not cool, cow. You're Mr. Fancy Cow. In fact, let's go ahead and just break this and uh, kill that too. All right. We're killing everything today, apparently. Uh, we're also going to go ahead and kill this piece of grass. 
we're gonna take our pink slime bucket and we're gonna place it into the world now momentarily it should take just uh, maybe a minute I don't really know exactly how long it takes but it should spawn a little slime ball we're gonna take this reusable safari net here before he dies and we're gonna right click on him reusable safari nets made with some ender pearls and a gas here this is actually what we're gonna be using to place inside of our auto spawner so let's get our HV capacitor let's set a output where's my output there's one and we'll place the auto spawner on top and the reusable safari net inside now this is gonna set to spawn exact copy no which we don't want and this should start spawning us hopefully in just a moment some big slimes oh we also need the essence that's right we need some mob essence so how do we get essence well there's actually another way we can go about doing that um, interestingly enough we don't have to go about doing a whole mob farm uh, we can actually I think get it in a different sense we have some experience on us and that might actually be enough to go ahead and spawn enough of these to get what we want but unfortunately we're gonna have to hold off on that until next episode we're gonna go ahead and call this part one of project ender quarry and we'll pick it up next episode so with that being said i'm gonna say thank you guys so much for watching hopefully you guys enjoyed let me know what you guys think if you guys have any helpful tips tricks or comments feel free to put them in that comic section comic section the comment section down below <laughs> don't be too funny down there guys come on it was a joke literally and until next time oh yeah uh, if you guys rate the video greatly appreciate it until next time we'll see you guys then goodbye